from the inside, what you'll notice is the back here and the right at the back there and then that corner there, I've pitched very low to the ground, as low as you can go almost. Now, often you'll find that these edges, say like this edge here, I've pitched outwards, which, which raises it slightly. But that, like the door, is downwind. So that's why I've kept that pitched <coughs> higher. But this one here, I've pitched much lower to the ground. Plus I've put Lass's bag behind, which gives some wind protection with the bath sheet lifted up. And this side here, if you look, that side there is higher than that bit in the middle. And then that bit up there is, you know, is very high. So if I had a long line on that one, there would be a, quite a big gap under there. So therefore I've deliberately pitched that one lower and close to get it close to the ground and, and low. Close to ground is low, isn't it? Um, so you don't have to necessarily, you know, pitch it a long way out. You can get it close if necessary to reduce the wind. And you can, you can see how windy and, and chilly it is outside. And we've got the sun coming through. You've got, I'm in bare feet here. I probably will put my socks on soon because they're, they're cooling off. But, you know, that's also because they've been outside and it was wet and cold out there as well. But I mean, they're not uncomfortably cold. And of course, I can't check the weather in here or the temperature in here because that's outside. Although actually, you can see on my G-Shock, GWG 2000 there, if you look at the left in the corner on that little window next to the 47, you can see that the barometer is climbing, if, it, if you can see that. But we actually have a thermometer on here, don't we? That's the altimeter. That's the compass. There we are, temperature. <laughs> I've done a video on this, you wouldn't believe I've, I've still forgotten how to use the bloody thing. Okay, so it's around about nine and a half degrees centigrade in here. So it will be interesting to see what it is, you know, outside. So I'm going to try and do a video. Let's see, get that. It's not your dinner. Barometer. Oh, okay, so the temperature is part of the barometer on here. I'm still trying to... This is the uh, Rangeman GW9400. So if you watch um, Extraction, the wind's sort of easing off a little bit now, but it's quite blustery out there. I mean, I'll show you. Stay, Lassie, stay. I mean, stay there, stay. We, we use Lassie as a, as a wind meter. You can see, you can see the coat, you can see her coat. It's quite breezy, you know. We are actually in the wind. We're not like some of these YouTubers that, that say there's a gale force wind out there and a blade of grass isn't even shifting. <laughs> you know, you can quite clearly see Lass's coat is fluttering quite a lot <laughs> in the breeze out there. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so I got nothing against all these YouTubers. I just I just find it 
I just find it, you know, amusing that the way we all, and I do it the same now, I storm this, storm that. I, I just find it amusing how now to attract attention, it's, you know, it's I'm in, I'm in the world's worst storm or something like that. I don't know why everybody is uh, so fascinated with storms. It does seem to be easing off a little bit now. You can, you know when it's really going at it, hammer and tongs, is because you can hear the wheel. You can hear the wheel in the, uh, the wind thing, um, you know, <laughs> spinning around. So, you know, you know it's quite breezy when you can actually hear, <laughs> hear the disc spinning around. Anyway, like I said, outside it's probably quite cool, <sighs> but in here it's very pleasant and there's not really much in the way of of drafts coming through here you know sometimes people worry you know about a draft so you know it's quite breezy outside and Okay, I'm not saying that there's no dry. I mean, it's not that it's not moving. You know, I mean, clearly, you know, I just want to be careful I don't give you a crotch shot. <laughs> not unless you... <laughs> not unless you're Bridget Bardot or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's a bit old now, isn't she? Um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, clearly, you know, it, there, there, is, there is a small draft, but it's not, you know, it's not very much. And clearly, if the wind was much, much stronger, then, you know, clearly you would probably have, you know, a little bit more of a breeze you know you can see that it is moving but not a huge amount and like I said it's probably about 20 miles an hour outside so you know so if it was like 40 miles an hour outside I don't think it would be doing you know I don't think it'd be doing that inside I think it definitely you can see it's picking up there and it's like just a marginal flutter in here. And it's not that difficult, really, you know, to close off most. <laughs> and it's not that difficult to close off gaps. Like I said, you know, I've put Lass's pack down there. And then I've put my rucksack down there so you know there's usually something that will go where you don't want the wind so even if you're using a tarp or an open shelter like this you can usually put something down there you know to help you know reduce the wind <laughs> as it were you know there, there's always ways and and means of doing so. Anyway, I think I've rabbited on enough. This is probably going to be a long video and most people won't watch it, but I'll try and remember to, in the future, to do a, a tarp, like a special tarp video and, and how to sort of mitigate how to mitigate the wind and what have you you know I mean obviously you can see it's blowing in a little bit I mean you can expect that but you get that on any shelter and the, 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 the beauty the, you know the beauty with the trail star is that there's nothing to break as long as your your pole here as long as your erection here is solid enough and obviously your pole at the door then there really is nothing to break and I still say that whilst I love the super med 
you know, and the super mid is just amazing because it's just so ridiculously big. And obviously I love my taps because, you know, they're just great. You haven't got a centre pole in the way and, and everything else like that. But I still say if you have one shelter, if you only ever get one shelter and you never get something else, and then just get the trail star because it literally will do... Nine, I reckon the trail star would do 95% of what we do if you mitigate you know the occasional draft here and there and you can put up with a slight inconvenience of maybe moving the door occasionally and i've seen these things used in snow too i mean that's the one time i would be a little bit more cautious with the spin drift and that type of thing but i i've seen the i've seen pictures of these in snow too i mean i don't have any experience of that uh, none you know i mean it's really quite chilly outside and it's very cosy it's very very cosy in here i'm very comfortable all right i'm gonna stop talking <laughs> i'm gonna have my porridge and then we'll try and do something all oh, the weather i mean i can hear that thing howling away out there i'll definitely check the wind meter later on i mean you know this is dartmouth i mean we're near we're near South Brent, and that's showing uh, like 14 miles per hour. Well, uh, let me take a screenshot, and then I can add it in for you. It's showing, it's showing 14, but gusting up to 42, easing off later on, easing down to the uh, teens, 20s and teens. So, and tomorrow, Friday, is going to be even calmer. Tomorrow is going to be calmer and sunny intervals. Tomorrow is going to be Friday. We will have a slight easterly wind tomorrow, and that's north and that's east, right where the door is. It's only uh, two gusting to eight miles per hour, so that won't matter. Then it swings around to the, the north and the northeast lunchtime and then back around to the, so I don't think it will be a problem. So even though the wind will be coming in this way tomorrow, it's a very, very light wind. So we probably won't need to change the door. The, the, the uh, strongest wind for today, though, as I say, is 16 gusting up to 42. So we'll see whether we, whether we get that. And Dartmouth, which is what it's saying is the local area, but I don't think it's that close. That's gusting up to 40. And Harford, which is kind of like just over there, that's gusting up to 42. And in fact, Harford over there is uh, 42 all afternoon. So it will be interesting to see how high the gusts get. It is easing off and tomorrow just generally looks better. But it's not supposed to rain, it's supposed to be dry. It's supposed to be dry and sunny. So this is the time where it's at its windier. So we'll kind of, so we'll kind of see, you know, what happens there. Anyway, my porridge has probably gone stone cold now, but never mind. I'm gonna have a porridge, blow my nose again, and then we'll get on and do a few other a few other things. See you later. Okay. Well, you can see how relatively stable things are in here. And uh, yes, it is. You do have to. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, you kind of. When you. <laughs> when you're uh, pitched very low. You definitely do have to kind of crawl out. And it's kind of made a bit worse when you've got these lumps right here and here, which really doesn't help. But do you remember? But do you remember the top speed? I was camping there, it was 36 
point something. And if you remember the number of 3 gt it was blowing around quite a lot now. The wind's here. <coughs> okay, that's not clearly not 30. But you can quite clearly see that it's it's heading up to the <coughs> it's heading up to 20 20 mile an hour mile. That's 25, 28, 28. 28. So we know that's quite breezy. Wow, that's a strong gust there. And look, the trail star is not moving. <laughs> you know, we got we got a gust that was coming through there. You know, of high twenties. Now that's a gust. I don't need to put fake wind noise in. That's, that's a gust. And the trail star is not moving at all. There, there's no movement at all. That's maybe 25, 30. You know, that's a good 25, 28, 30. No. Just to prove to you that I didn't even know I was in the equivalent of Storm Eunice. If you look there, I hope it's focusing on it. Maximum 36.5. So the maximum speed we have had today so far is exactly was the maximum speed that I had in Storm Eunice. And uh, the Nomad was pumping a bit. And this trail star, it hasn't freaking moved. You know, that is, you know, admittedly it's not 40 or 50. and a half you know it's pretty gusty <laughs> and it's not moving you know and you can see my hood flapping And then, as soon as we... <laughs> we'll go in, actually, we'll go in that side, I think, because I've got my tea. And as soon as we come in here... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, you know, you can see the ground sheet there, you know, it's just fluttering slightly excuse that wind noise i think i forgot to turn you the know, microphone it's a very on. very slight flutter and that's actually that's actually a good thing because if you've got some oh god oh bloody hell oh, i really am getting too old for this oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not moving. 
you know, like I said, I, I had, we obviously had a 36 mile per hour gust that came through. Now, unfortunately with you and this, I only know the speeds every hour. I should have set it up to, to do those recordings every like 10 or 20 minutes or something like that. But we know that the maximum gust was 36 and there was probably, you know, quite a few that were at that speed, you know, <clears throat> or, or near that speed. That was the maximum. But we clearly had a 36 come through here and I didn't know anything about it. I was, I don't know, talking to you or, you know, looking at my phone or something. I mean, maybe this side here, you know, like that, you can see maybe it just came in <laughs> marginally. Um, I wouldn't have known anything. I wouldn't have known anything about it at all. So, it's just further evidence as I keep telling people and everybody just scoffs at me, you know, we keep going on about this trail star, no, it can't be as good as a hilly bird, can't be as good as such and such and such and such. It's better than anything out there, hands down. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to my cup of tea and stop my, uh, <laughs> stop my, stop my ranting about how good this thing is. It's not until I can get back in and I suddenly kind of remember how damn good it is. I mean, yes, that wind is quite strong now and there definitely is, you know, there's definitely a breeze coming through. You know, I'm not saying there isn't a breeze, you know, there's definitely a breeze coming through. So, if you were using this in, you know, sub-zero temperatures, then clearly you'd be... Well, first of all, if there was a lot of snow, the snow itself would probably stop the wind from coming in anyway, because it would very quickly cover up those gaps. But clearly, if you were in a place and it wasn't snowing, but it was very cold, then again, as I say, you could maneuver your rucksack or something, you know, slightly better than I have done. But basically, uh, be prepared and understand that there will be, you know, a small cold breeze coming through and make sure that you've got a sleeping bag, you know, to cope with that. And you'll be safer in that. I can almost guarantee than anything else. Obviously a hilly bird is going to protect you as well, obviously, I'm not saying it's not, but, you know. Quite clearly it's significantly heavier than this. Anyway, I need to have my tea, which I've uh, had to nip out for uh, <laughs> a crap. <laughs> All right, okay, oh, back, to, back to my tea, see you later. That's the end of this third part. Make sure you come back again for the fourth part where we will have a look at my old trail star and compare it briefly to the new one. And of course here you can see me pitching it in quite a strong breeze. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button while I just do my trousers up. And I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.